Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about alert level three in the NCR region. Um, we were lucky, we were in the NCR region yesterday, we were in Manila, and it wasn't too bad yesterday as far as going into places, but with them going now to alert level three, it's gonna be a big change there because I guess they're having a, a pretty much, a pretty big outbreak of Omicron up there and, and regular COVID also. But that's what's going on in that area anyway. And that's a major change for us here because we were doing so well. And I guess um, some woman snuck out of a hotel or somebody snuck out of a hotel, I guess, and they spread it. And that's what started all this stuff from what I'm hearing from different people. But anyway, you know, I don't want to talk too much about that because that's 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 bad news. I, w I would rather focus on the good news, but I just want to let people know about that. Um, I think that might set us back a little bit, but... Omicron's pretty fast, so I think it's going to just go through like that. It'll spread, and I think Filipinos will spread that pretty fast. Um, I myself don't think that we should try to stop it. I think we should try to let it go through and let everybody get it if it's not that big of a deal. That's that's just my opinion. You know, I know a lot of people say, no, no, Steve, that's crazy, but it's just kind of like a cold. Um, you know, a lot of us have already been vaccinated, so it's not going to be that bad now. So that's why I think it's not as bad as they make it out to be. And in the United States, they're trying to say like one out of every 3,000 people die from it. I don't really believe that that's true unless somebody is like over age 80 or something like that. And people, of course, we've stated this before, when people get the flu um, or whatever, or pneumonia goes through a nursing home or whatever, the flu goes through a nursing home, people are going to pass away and they're going to die. It's It's basically kind of that time in your life when you die from things like that. And unfortunately, that's, I hate to say it, I don't, you know, wish that upon anybody, but I'm just saying that's part of life, you know, and it's kind of a sad part of life that it is like that. But I just want to state that, yeah, NCR region was taking a step backwards, means a lot of things are going to start changing, you know, as far as eating in restaurants, we're going backwards on all that stuff. Um, school, basically, kind of shut down, shut down right now, back to modules all that stuff so that's changed a um, lot of a lot of things are going to happen i think this is going to progress get worse it'll go outside the ncr region probably to our region next and the rest will be history as they say but yeah i think it's going to happen um i think people are starting to get burned out and sick of this a little bit i i do see it over here i think when we do these steps backwards it's kind of like we step out into the sunlight and then we're back into the darkness again we step out into the sunlight, we're back into the darkness again. And we've done this several times already over here. We keep stepping out into that sunlight. We feel how good it is. They give us a taste of it, and then they take it away from us. You know, and it's like that all throughout the world. It's not, not just in the Philippines that it's like that. It's all throughout the world, basically. But I want to—I just want to, you know, kind of touch on that. I also want to tell a kind of a cool story. Um, people always ask me, hey, what did you, Steve, when you went to the Philippines, well, you know, what, do you, what did you take to the Philippines? Like, what did you take that you know was was important to you and i don't know if i told this story before or not but i'm going to tell it again it's kind of a, a a cool story it's about a a 50 year long hide the thimble game that our family played and we played this game hide the thimble in the house we used to have this little thimble that you use for sewing and we used to hide it around it had to be in a place that you could see it with your open eye when you were walking around the room okay well we always played and this is when i was probably like about eight years old or seven years old or whatever. And the last game we played, my father was the one to hit it. And of course my father was really, really good at what he did. And he hit it in a place that we were all looking, checking everything out, you know, and he hit it up on top of this thing that had like a curtain thing. It was a wooden thing that covered the curtain, top of the curtains, okay? And he hit it right up on top there where you could see it. So it was, you know, you could see it with the open eye. And it was right there. Everybody could see it. But we never really looked up there to see it sitting up there. We probably thought it was something else or whatever. You know, but we were looking all low level, thinking he put it somewhere low level, maybe on top of like a lamp or something like that. You know, but you could see it from a certain position. We looked everywhere. We scoured that whole house playing that game. And I remember asking my father over the years, Dad, where did you hide it? He says, I'm not going to tell you. He says, that game's still going. He says, as far as I'm concerned, that game, you know, he says, I'm not going to tell you. That's the way my father was. He would play that you know, that game with you and just, you know, kind of tell you, hey, you figure it out. You'll you'll see. It's still there. Still in the same spot. 
And I'm like, man, he's playing hardcore, you know? And I remember even asking him, you know, after like 20 years, hey, Dad, where is it so we can play? I'm not going to tell you. It's, we're still playing that game, you know? And, and it was, that's the way he played. He played hardcore, you know? And I remember when he had Parkinson's, I had forgotten all about the thimble. And he moved into the soldier's home, the Chelsea soldier's home where he wanted to go. And he moved in, in there. And he, he eventually, we had to sell his home and everything for him. And I remember when I was cleaning out the house, I came across the thimble. And I had that thimble. And I remember walking into my father and telling him, hey, Dad, game over. You know, like, and... It was a 50, 50 year long hide the thimble game. And I saved that thimble because I put it in my pocket and it's one of the things that I took over here from the United States because it meant, even though that little thimble was something, probably cost about a dime or a quarter or something like that to buy one of those thimbles, that thimble meant more to me than anything else because it, was, it had a great story behind it, a 50 year hide the thimble game. And you know, it just, I thought it was the coolest thing to have that with me, you know, and I still have that today. I have it in the house here. And some of the other things that I took with me was pictures. But take those memories with you guys. When you come to the Philippines, take some memories with you. It might be anything from your family that meant a lot to you. Take something that reminds me of you, reminds you of when you were a child or when you were, you know, of a, of a great story in your family it could be a picture it could be something like a thimble like with me you know just just take something like that with you because it's important to have memories of your past especially the great times in your past forget about the old times leave all that stuff on the tarmac all the bad stuff leave that on the tarmac take the great memories with you that thimble was a great memory for me you know and I'm sure you guys have great memories too Everyone does. Don't tell me that you don't have any great memories because everyone has some memories from their childhood that were good memories. You know, if you look back hard enough, I'm sure you can find them. I've had people tell me, well, I don't have that many great memories when I was a kid. I'm sure you have a couple, you know, and we, it doesn't even have to be one from, from your childhood. It could be from when you were older or whatever, a good time that you had with your family or just by yourself or with some friends or from a friend or close friend or Whoever it may be, take those memories with you, even if it's up here. Even if it's just up here. But it's great. Sometimes, I mean, I know some people, their memories are in a hat that their father wore. You know, things like that. Take those memories with you if you can. If, this, if you still have that hat, take it with you. You know, a lot of people, you know, they forget that stuff. They don't take it with them. Whatever it may be, even if it's something big. It might be worth shipping over here so you have a good memory over here. When I pass away, I want to leave a lot of good memories for my family over here. And, I, you know, I build memories with, 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 with my kids and with my girlfriend over here. So that if something ever happens to me, they have a lot of memories of me to remember me. But don't forget your memories too, guys. God bless. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog, guys. God bless. And Happy New Year, guys.